Hello everyone, Luke here and welcome back to the channel. So I've always wanted to build one of these. So I took a look at Rob's video, the easiest wind generator you'll ever make, and this is what I've come up with. And you guys may think I have an advantage being around Rob, but let me tell you something, he basically ignores me. <laughs> right, so let's get into the build. So we got donated this from the car guys just up the road. And what this is, it's a uh, car radiator fan. And in the middle of this, I think that there's a brushed DC motor in it. So what we're gonna do is connect it up to the multimeter, give it a spin, and we should actually be able to generate something. Okay, so now we've got this connected up to the multimeter, let's just give it a spin just to see what happens. Wowzers. So that's actually generating about 0 0.8 of a volt. Right, so if we give this a spin now, it will show us how many amps it's producing. So... So about 0.6 of an amp. So the idea for this is to turn it into a wind generator, and I've never actually done one of these before. So, I'm going to be using these, which Rob actually made. So, let's get this out of its case and take a look at the motor. So here is my motor, and this was the case that surrounded it, but what I've done is I've adapted this a little bit and taken all the fins off. And the reason for this is, this thing right here, and this is an adaption plate for the uh, actual fins to go on the top which is gonna make our wind generator. So what I'm gonna do next is drill out these three holes, which is going to be the attachment, and then the middle hole so the actual spindle can pop all the way through. So there's been a slight little change of plan on how I'm actually going to attach the blades onto the motor. So instead of the original adaption plate that I made, I've decided to do this. So let's take a look. So it's the same bars that I cut out before, but what I've done is I've cut out Three triangles at 120 degrees, so I know that all of this is evenly spaced apart. Here's my middle section for it to go in. Here's the bolt holes for the case, and then here are the holes for the actual um, blades. Okay, so let's see how this actually gets put together. So I've got my motor here with my adapted plastic case. This goes on and it's specifically keyed, and then an M6 nut goes over the top of this to keep this nice and solid. Then what happens is we grab our little adaption thingy, stick it into the holes that we've drilled out, like so, so it sits nice and flat, like so, and then it's free to spin. And then we grab our blades, and these literally get fitted into these bars, like so. And once all of them are fitted on, we've actually got our little wind turbine. So, I'm going to do that now. So this is what it looks like when the whole thing's put together. And you're probably going to notice that I've angled these blades a little bit better. And that's because they have to. It has to catch the wind and it acts almost like a sail. So let's take this out into the wind, connect it up to a multimeter and see what it can do. Right, so we're in the car park and there's a little bit of a breeze. So let's see what kind of volts this can produce. There we go. Again, that was seriously awesome. He's never done anything like that before, and I tell you what, when he gave out about two watts, I kind of just suspected this as, you know, not happy, okay? So we went and had a look at Omni Calculator. It's just an online calculator. 
Her blade length here is 52 centimeters. The wind speed was 2.5 meters per second. And guess what? When you put that into that calculator, then a normal commercial turbine is going to produce more or less two watts. So this homemade from scrap, a Fiesta fan, and Luke's very first time ever building anything like that. And he's doing as well as a commercial turbine. I just thought that was awesome. Anyway, when he found that out, yeah, he perked up. <laughs> so Rob was right. When I did find that out, it did bring a massive smile to my face. And I also want to give a huge thanks to Aidan, Luke, and Luke's dad at Canterbury Automotive for donating the radiator fan. With that being said, that does bring me to the end of this video. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to put them in the comments and I'll try my best to answer them all. Anyway guys, I hope you have a great day and I'll see you later.